I want to start by explaining my choice of colours for today's video. It's not that I lack imagination, though I probably also do, but I'm actually trying to be as sustainable as possible with my videos and your display. Dark colours require less energy to display on a traditional screen, so in the interest of trying to do my part and be as sustainable as possible, any videos I make with graphics like this will be leveraging a dark theme. I hope it helps make the key points pop too. Any feedback on this, please drop a comment down below. So for those of you who watched the unboxing video, thank you. But also you may be wondering what happened to the missing inverter. Well, I've been in touch with Tessup and they have assured me that it's not MIA, but in fact being shipped from a different location. As the inverter is made by a third party, I'll be getting a separate tracking number specifically for it, as apparently they ship them independently to the turbine and charge controller which they make in-house. So hopefully that will turn up soon. Until then, on with the video. Right, let's talk about my plans for my wind turbine as well as what my current system looks like. I wanted to install a wind turbine to offset the solar panels and extend the battery storage that I already have. Currently I have two Tesla Powerwall 2s with the Gateway 2. The Gateway is my gateway to the grid. This gives me 27 kilowatt hours of storage. Our home typically uses about 35 kilowatt hours of electricity a day, so this alone isn't quite enough to be off grid all the time. As for energy generation, we have two solar PV systems. One on the main house, which is 3.7 kilowatts, installed in 2010, and the other of 5.8 kilowatts on the charging shed installed in 2020. Together, they total just under 10 kilowatts of energy generation at peak. It's important that we know about the two main types of electricity. DC, or direct current, is a flat delivery of electrical power, with electrons flowing in a single direction only. AC, or alternating current, is an oscillating variable delivery of electrical power. Here electrons flow back and forth periodically, usually tens of times a second. Now, the key bit here is that AC and DC are not directly compatible with each other due to the differing power delivery characteristics. Solar panels, for example, generate DC electricity and require an inverter to change that into AC for your home to use. Finally, we also need to know about three-phase AC. Three-phase alternating current is a hybrid of the two, which gives a DC-type continuous high-power delivery, but with the transmissibility of AC by overlapping three different alternating currents to create a single output. And yes, I did say two types, but three-phase is really just a hybrid of the two. Okay, considering the types of electricity now, let's look at what each device does. The wind turbine generates three-phase AC natively. This is transported to the charge controller which converts the three-phase AC into DC. This DC is pushed into any batteries which may be in the system or can be sent directly to the inverter. The inverter can either pull from a battery bank or directly from the charge controller to convert DC into a grid-compatible single-phase AC. The advantage of higher voltage is that for the same power or load, the current requirements are lower and therefore have less losses due to heat and require smaller gauge of cabling. This is why the grid transmission lines use very high voltage. The grid is also AC because it's easier to up and downscale voltage with AC and transformers than it is with DC. This is however a lot of power conversions, each of which have their own efficiency losses. Let's look at how we can put this together then. First we need somewhere to stick our turbine. Up high on a truss or a mast is a good start. The wind turbine generates three phase AC, which is sent to the charge controller. The charge controller then decides if it needs to dump the load via a large resistor or if it can push the power out to batteries or an inverter as DC. This is typically 12 to 48 volts. In my case, it's 48 volts, which is actually 52 to 58 volts at the battery pack level. The inverter takes in DC and converts it to single phase AC that is grid compliant. For me in the UK, that's 240 volts and 50 hertz. This 240 volts AC is sent to my home for it to either use or push onto the Tesla gateway. Now the Tesla gateway does a few clever things and I'll get more into that in a bit. So at this point, I'm still undecided about using the battery packs. I teased the packs I made in the first unboxing video and it would have been nice to have the extra five kilowatt hours of storage but it would be simpler just to leave the Tesla Powerwalls to handle it all. 
initially for testing I'll use the batteries as the target for the power generation and to test that the dump load kicks in correctly when they are full. However, longer term I may remove them from the system entirely. Going back to the Tesla gateway and the inverters, let's look at those clever things that they can do during the edge cases. The Tesla gateway can divert excess power to the batteries by converting the AC back to DC and store it in the power walls for later, or it can push the excess power to the grid. The gateway isolates us from the grid and keeps us online, even if the grid goes out. It manages power by sensing what the frequency of the grid in the house is and working out if it is low, i.e. It needs more power, or if it's high and it needs to export some power. Low and high are relative here because for the UK grid regulations, it's only about plus or minus 0.5 Hertz from the reference of 50 Hertz, which defines the direction of the power will flow. If the frequency is low and the batteries are maxed out or fully drained, then the gateway will pull power from the grid to get that frequency back up to the target of 50 Hertz. If the frequency is high and the batteries are already full or already charging at max power, then it will push the spare power out of the house to the grid. In the event the grid connection is lost and the frequency gets too high, the inverters, solar and wind, will stop pushing power to the house and disconnect. The wind turbine charge controller dump load should now kick in. This avoids the scenario where the grid is gone and the batteries are full but power is still being pushed into the house. Okay, next steps are going to be build and assemble the wind turbine itself and make sure that we have all the parts for it, then put up a tower for it to stand on. Next we will need to run cabling and any lightning protection that we might need. We need to ensure that the charge controller, inverter and maybe batteries, if we decide to use them, are safely and securely mounted in the workshop. Once that's done, we can test the wind turbine is generating enough power to charge the batteries and or start up the inverter. When we're happy with the tests and that we think it's reliable, then we can get a qualified electrician to come and connect it to the house side of the grid, inside of the power walls. The gateway manages our connection to the outside world and so will stop any export for us if the grid goes down automatically. Finally, we want to see what we are generating up here in the Tesla app and so we're going to need to integrate it properly with the power walls, probably using a current meter of some sort. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, hit the bell icon too. I will be continuing to release videos in this wind turbine series over the coming weeks, but if there are any other topics you would like to see me cover, please comment down below. I appreciate all the feedback you guys have given me so far, so please keep it coming and I will see you in the next one.